There are very few people who everyone on the planet has heard of. You just have to say their name and people know who they are. Well, we're lucky enough to have one of those individuals here this evening. It is, of course, the fabulous Yoko Ono. <laughs> Let me get under the hat. There you go. Okay. Come and sit down. Okay. That's a fabulous hat and leather jacket combo you are Thank rocking you. tonight. It's a bit bigger than me. <laughs> the hat is it's yeah, big right. on the big side. Hey, it's lovely to see you again. Thank you for joining us. Um, can I start? You had a big celebration this year. There was a big birthday this year. Uh, what was that? <laughs> what celebration? <laughs> Wasn't it? Was your birthday in February? Oh, yes, yes. Can we say which one it was? Well, you know, I became 80 and I'm, I'm very... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no way anyone would think you're 80. Absolutely <laughs> not. You're incredible for 80. Well, I, I'm surprised too, you know. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you do to keep in good shape? Because you look incredible. You have fitness. Well, I don't definitely... really... See, that's another thing. Uh, most people think, oh, well, I haven't done any um, exercise, so I have to give up. Don't give up. I mean, any time when you start doing it, it works, you know. I mean, your body is really a very uh, sensitive and, and powerful thing. And I, I just, you know, most people think that, oh, she must be doing exercise every day or something. No, I just forget and do some work or something. And it's, oh, I better do some exercise. And just. And what kind of exercise do you do? Well, I, I like to walk. So just Walking a nice... is supposed to be very good. A brisk walk, mm -hmm. no jogging. No, no jogging. No. Jog, well, I, mean, I could jog maybe too, but. I don't. <laughs> no kickboxing. Fun. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. And do you do you are you someone who has a very strict routine about the the number of hours you sleep, the amount of water you drink? No. Right now, I just finished making an album, which wow. is really great. This is incredible. How many eighty-year-olds are sitting at home saying, you know, I've got to finish that new album? <laughs> because since your eightieth birthday, you've had a number, another number one dance single. Yes. It's incredible. So you've had how many number one dance singles have you had in the States? Ten. Now? I had ten consecutively. Ten number one. Ten consecutively. <laughs> and this is since your 80th birthday, you had another <laughs> yeah, number yeah. one. <laughs> wow. But you still have the energy to go on stage. You still perform. Well, see, that's another thing that I realised. That means, just like everybody else, you know, I thought, 80, well, that means that maybe you'll just be asleep or, you know, <laughs> always in bed or something. No. You get more energy more energy than what you had before. We've got some footage of you. You, you always love to dance. Yeah, yeah. Ever mm. since you were tiny. I love dancing. Oh, yeah, when I was a little girl, yes, I was... Whenever I was filmed, for some reason, I started dancing. That's so sweet. Well, we have some footage of Yoko. I'm not sure how old you are here. Do I was two and a half years old. This is Yoko when she was two and a half years old and essentially kind of looks the same. It's about the same height. <laughs> dancing. Look, look at this. <laughs> and that's my daddy. <laughs> it's the same moves as well. You're doing this. <laughs> uh, Not really, please. It's so sweet to see your daddy there. But your mum and dad, they didn't approve. When you married John, they didn't approve of that, did they? I felt that um, they wanted me to become a very good classical musician. And instead of that, I married into a rock family, you know, yeah. rock and roll. Yeah, yeah. And so it was the whole rock and roll, the kind of anti establishment Yeah, exactly. So a little bit prejudice towards rock and roll, I suppose. Yeah. Um, let me ask you a question. This is, and I hope this doesn't, isn't too personal, but you, you still live in the Dakota building in New York. Yes, I am. And that's I'm the building, living. of course, where John was murdered outside. You were with him when he was shot. Yes, but, you know, it was our home. That was the only home we had. And uh, with, well, that's the only home I had with John. I'm not going to leave it. And s <laughs> One thing I think, uh, which I think definitely we can trace back to you and John, certainly if you look now, it's very unusual to find uh, any intelligent member of the rock fraternity or the R&B fraternity who, who if, if he or she is not involved in issues, is not involved in trying to change things for the better in the way they see it. And I think one can trace that back pretty much directly to you guys. You were kind of the pioneers of that, that sort of thing. Yeah, we were, in a way, yeah. But, I mean, I think that these days when I look around, uh, most musicians are activism, I mean, activists. And it's really great. I mean, it's just getting to be like the whole world is becoming activists. And, 
and that's how we're going to make it. Do you think John would have approved? Do you think he would have been hard? Well, I think he's uh, having a big smile now. <laughs> yes. That's so sweet. Um, I know you're very active on Twitter, and this is an interesting thing because there aren't that many octogenarians on Twitter that I'm aware of. Uh, you seem to embrace new technology. You're not one of these people who is frightened. It. You seem to adopt uh, and adapt yeah. pretty well, quickly. Well, you see with Meltdown too. I'm inviting people who are very uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, avant. What is the, I wouldn't say avant-garde, but very new music and also new ideas. Yeah. You know, all the sort of heavy women artists, but also uh, men who are sort of new age men. So, so like Iggy Pop, for example. Iggy Pop, uh, Boy George, you know, yeah. it's uh, all the people who understand about women as well. And you've got, and Patti Smith is on the bill as well. Patti so Smith is incredible there, Incredible yeah. voices and incredible. Yeah. Uh, and and Pussy be... Riot, you know, from Russia. I do know Pussy Riot. Yeah, yeah you I know I thought that. some of Pussy Riot were in jail. Are they out now or are they still...? Well, some of them are still uh, sort of... Right. Uh, in there. <laughs> wow. So you've been in... Yeah. <laughs> well, but, so Sam will be here and we hope we can get the rest out yes, eventually. Yes. Uh, that's exciting, though. Um, and you are performing. Do you do new material on stage or is it... Do you know what material you'll be doing, what set you'll be doing? Well, I'm doing, uh, well, Plastic on a Band. And uh, in the end, I think that the last day we're doing Double Fantasy. <laughs> oh, wow. That'd be incredible. And this is the first time that Double Fantasy is being done this way, yeah. So this will be the first live performance of Double Fantasy. Yeah, right, exactly. Oh. Let me ask you about something, and I've never asked you this, I don't think, is for all that period when people were blaming you for the breakup of the Beatles? Well, you know, I've been blamed, I don't know, maybe 30, 40 years now. You so know? you were aware of that going on? You were aware oh, that's what people were saying? Oh, I was fully aware of it because it was like they were jabbing me all the time. Like acupuncture, you know, it, it is probably actually healthy that people jab me and I was turning that negative energy into positive energy. And that's why I think that one of the reasons that I'm healthy now is because we're healthy, well, sort of healthy, <laughs> healthy is because uh, I went through all that. And thank you very much. <laughs> so the negativity, you could turn that into a positive in some way. Yeah. But it was very sweet reason, I thought, that, that Paul came out, Paul McCartney came out and cleared the air a little bit and said, look, you know, for those people that who That was are... very sweet of him to yeah. do that. I'm sure that, you know, he got tons of letters saying, how dare you say that? I mean, you know, because they like the idea of us being in a boxing ring, you know, okay. sort of fighting. Also, it's good to have... Like, people like having someone to demonise. People like having yeah, someone yeah. to blame. You know, and you were, you were the easy target, I guess. Well, you know, we know each other for such a long time and, and he's a very sensitive and intelligent guy. So, of course, you know, she understands what was going on, yeah. that it wasn't going on. Yeah. What's your favourite song that you've written? Well, I like all my songs. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, <I'm> very good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and from John's body of work, from the songs that you know he wrote, which one of is the one John that... John is very special, you know. And he's, uh, he, uh, well, I'm not saying that he's the only, but I think he, he was a genius, yes. And he wrote Woman for you, didn't he, the song? I know. Huh? Which is, well, oh, no, I know you know, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you didn't know, this would have been a funny way to find out, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But one thing, I mean, what a beautiful song. Well, you know, it, it wasn't very easy for me, because after John passed away, you know, um, I go to a shop or something, and they're playing Woman, you know. What's a bit... Just, you know, to choke me up, actually. <laughs> so they would put it on when you went in there, you think? Mm. Oh, no, that's awful, then. No, no, they weren't doing it intentionally, you know. Oh. It's just that it's going on on the radio. It was a hit, of course. Yeah.